day and welcome to Let Talk Law, pro bono.org's legal podcast hosted by EPF. I am Amber Williams and in celebration of Women's Month, we are going to be focusing on female law practitioners, their importance and impact. And we have with us today Unati Dlamini from probono.org. Unati Dlamini completed her LLB at the University of KwaZulu-Natal and advanced program in labor law at UP with a distinction. She specializes in employment law and has experience with the following, drafting and reviewing employment contracts, drafting legal opinions, appearances in the CCMA and bargaining councils, assisting with labor court proceedings, conducting disciplinary hearings, um, training sessions for corporate clients and advising clients on Papia and FICA compliance. She also advises clients on matters relating to social media and social and cyber crimes, which, as we know, is a rising concern. And she is passionate about employment law, and that extends to using her skills to making it accessible to members of the community who would not ordinarily have access to such. She believes that the community engagements that are driven by probono.org are the perfect vehicle for her to incorporate her love for employment law with her passion for informative, community-based engagements. She is currently practicing in the, um, in the employment law area at Shipston and Wiley Attorneys. Thank you so much for joining us, Unachi. How are you Thank feeling you, today? I'm good. I'm very excited to be here. It's actually my first podcast, so oh. a milestone for me. Yeah, <laughs> I am so glad that we're the ones who get to walk you through that journey. Yeah, um, I'm very excited. <laughs> so, Unati, let's dive right in. Who is Unati, and how did you get into the legal field? Okay. So Unati Lamini is originally from the Eastern Cape in Tata. I moved to Durban. Um, I say moved because obviously I did my schooling um, partly in the Eastern Cape, moved over to Durban and studied LLB at UKZN, Howard College campus. Um, after my LLB, I then started my articles at Shepston and Wiley and then rotated into my passion field being the employment law department. I've been at Shepston and Wiley since 2020, so I was a COVID CA, um, and I've been there ever since. Okay, wow. I mean, I really must commend your passion for community-based engagements and really taking the legal sphere to the community, especially considering that, you know, this, you got into it during COVID. But... Uh, Talk us through the journey of how you started volunteering at protobono.org. Okay, so interestingly enough, I started volunteering at Pro Bono uh, during my third year at Varsity. So I took part in the volunteer program that's um, held during the semester break. Mm -hmm. So after exams, I did that volunteer program and I did it for about a month. Usually the program runs for a week, um, if I'm not mistaken. But I actually really enjoyed being part and parcel of the pro bono group. At the time, the offices were in town on Smith Street. Mm -hmm. And I just continued um, throughout the month. And my relationship with probono.org has continued um, from then um, throughout my time at Shepston and Wiley, um, you know, participating in different engagements, um, webinars, Facebook lives, and the like. Okay, great. Um, and... What has been your experience with women's issues while you've been at probono.org? Because obviously you've been there for or been volunteering with them for a while now. Yeah. So uh, what what has been your experience mostly dealing with women's issues? I'd say given the nature of the organization that probono.org is, um, women's issues are platformed and they're quite visible um, within the work that probono.org does. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason for that is they have an innate understanding of the issues that are facing women, um, you know, obviously because pro bono works within and with um, individuals from marginalized communities. 
And unfortunately, a lot of the time, those individuals are women. Mm -hmm. uh, ProBono.org also has an innate understanding of the role that women play in society and the rather unfortunate power dynamics that they become subjected to. So it, you know, it's something that has been at the, I'd say at the center of how they operate and the matters that come before us as volunteer attorneys. Um, and also within the community engagements, um, you know, those are issues that, that come to the fore um, when we do take part in such. A hundred percent. And I, I must say, um, pro bono.org, I definitely feel that women's issues are definitely part of their core principle. So I definitely resonate with what you're saying. And do you feel like you've been able to contribute to the advancement or at least the understanding of women's rights within the legal field, being a female law practitioner and also working with this organization that's really creates a platform for women's issues? I'd say so, Amber. Um, I think as a woman, as you pointed out, advancing women's rights um, it's not just lip service for me, you know, it's intrinsically linked to my lived experience as a woman in this country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before anything else, I am a black woman. Um, you know, the title of attorney, you know, was added on through qualifications. Mm -hmm. But at the heart of it, I'm a black woman living in South Africa. Yes. And, you know, that will always be my lived experience day in and day out. So I have, you know, an intrinsic understanding of the problems that women go through because they are problems that I am not, um, you know, ex um, excluded from. They are problems that I also experience. Mm -hmm. I think where it becomes particularly important as an attorney is then using the knowledge that I've gained over time to play my part in bettering the situations of those that I can um, either by assisting with matters, you know, access to information, because that's at the core of a lot of the things that we do is the access to information, because when you know better, you do better. Yeah. And, you know, with, you know, the myriad of problems that face women, you know, when you take all the, the frills away from everything, mm -hmm. access to information is the foundation, is a foundational issue. And when you deal with that, a lot of the time you're dealing with how someone can take recourse with the issue that they are facing. And I think for me, that has been something that has been, you know, um, something that I'm passionate about and something that's very important to me um, is playing my part in imparting that knowledge and not just keeping that knowledge to myself. Yes. And I think uh, you mentioned something very important that, you know, first and foremost, we are women. And then these titles given to us by education and experience get added on to that. But I think the relatability factor and just being able to understand these issues that these women face, and especially in your case, these legal issues. And then, like you said, first and foremost, it being access to information. And then I'm sure mm -hmm. there are so many other issues that come after that. And you can help them walk that journey in navigating those issues. Mm -hmm. Would that be yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, when you have a lived experience that's common with someone else, there are certain nuances that don't even need to be articulated. You know, the, you understand certain sensitivities. Mm -hmm. um, you understand certain dynamics because that it's dynamics that you are also, um, you know, affected by. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, the general power dynamics um, and... Um, the role that women find themselves in when it comes to patriarchy. Mm -hmm. That's not something that another woman would have to articulate to me because that's something that I also am affected by. Yes. And I think that's where the relatability comes in because we can take those nuances and take them as commonly understood and commonly felt mm -hmm. and then move on to the next step of how do we use the law to better the situation that you are in? And I think that's where I come in as an attorney. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So on that note, uh, Unati, what changes or improvements would you hope to see in the legal sphere to better support um, women's rights and also their career growth as female legal practitioners because as you said it's something you relate to so 
what how do you imagine things evolving to better that situation for female legal practitioners I think more than anything, Amber, it would be to see women in leadership positions Mm -hmm. and across the board, from private practice to corporate, um, across all sectors, you know, not just, you know, in in the legal space. And I think the reason why that's important is representation is something that is very underestimated. The power of seeing someone who looks like you sounds like you, Mm -hmm. comes from a similar background, has faced the similar challenges that you faced, is it's 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 so important and it's it's so life changing Mm -hmm. because there is an there's a silent belief that gets instilled in you when you see someone like that where you know you believe that oh this is actually something that I can do. Mm -hmm. It's actually not impossible for me to achieve this because you know we can talk about trailblazers, we can talk about, you know, being a pioneer, but not enough is talked about how difficult that is. And you do need that support of seeing that representation because there are going to be days that it gets difficult. uh, I think as we all know as women, and sometimes you need to have someone that you can look back to and look up to, Mm -hmm. to say, oh, you know, if Amber can do it and get to that position, then, you know, the obstacles that I'm facing, they are part of the journey. It's not impossible. You know, it's a bad day, not a bad life, you know, and I can definitely push on through because for her to get to where she is, she's obviously been through similar challenges and she's conquered them and she's now at the top. And I think that's why it's so important to have more women in leadership positions. Mm -hmm. And going back to what we're discussing before about women innately understanding each other and the circumstances, when you are in leadership positions, you have access to power and access Mm -hmm. to power means access to facilitating change. So when you have more women that understand the issues, you know, um, facing women in corporate, you know, for example, maternity leave, Mm -hmm. um, maternity concerns, Mm -hmm. um, the role that women um play within their marriages and their homes um vis-a-vis the role that they play in you know in the workplace and how you balance those and initiatives that can help support women you know when you have someone in a leadership position effecting that change it trickles down to the entire organization and then that makes it easier for the next generation of employees coming in Mm -hmm. and the next generation of women coming in so there's a ripple effect um, when you empower women because of the very nature that they play, um, the, the very role rather that they play in society. 